Welcome back to Copper Star Precision, the channel dedicated to getting you more points at your competitive shooting matches. So let's just jump right into rim thickness discussions. There's a lot of ways to measure rim thickness, um, you know, using a set of calipers. You can try and get in here and get a rim thickness measurement, but this is really pretty inaccurate just because of how small the rim is that we're trying to measure. So there are some tools on the market, but I'm also going to share with you um, a pretty cheap way to measure rim thickness. So what I have here is a rim thickness gauge by Raven Eye Customs. And you get yourself a little dial indicator here. And I actually got a insert that makes like a nice flat edge instead of the usual like pointy bit. Um, I'll put links to all this stuff down below in the description. If you want to check this stuff out, I'll give you some Amazon links to where you can find this stuff. Why would you want to measure rim thickness? couple different reasons. People think that sorting by rim thickness is going to give them consistency, and that may be the case. I am going to uh, probably undergo a series of tests to see if actually sorting by rim thickness gives any sort of consistency gains, you know, lower standard deviation, tighter velocity spread, something like that. Um, but in order to do that, we need to be able to measure accurately. So I have this rim thickness gauge here, and if you want to see videos like that, consider supporting me on Patreon. Link for that will also be in the description help me uh, buy some ammo for testing. That'd be great. And we can help the community with different things. So pretty easy to use this. Let's start off with some, uh, start off with some Lapua, some Center X. And what you'll find is that rim thicknesses are pretty consistent between manufacturers and vary across manufacturers. So if we read that correctly, we are getting, looks like 42 and a half thousandths. Let's do a quick five. Sometimes you need to spin this around here. 43 thousandths there. It's been my experience with Lapu ammo. That also applies to SK ammo. There's another 42 and a half. You're right in that 42 and a half to 43 thousandths range. So that's sitting at 42 and a half. Do one more. That one's at 42. So that one's a little short, 42, 41 and a half possibly. So Lapua seems to be 42 and a half to 43 thousandths. We can pull out some random CCI. I found this is a little thinner typically. 42 and a half. Forty-one. And I found this to be around 41, 41 and a half. There's another 41. 41 and a half to 42. And that's 41 and a half there. And I think the biggest surprise for most people is something from Ely. So we have some 10x here. And there we're all the way at 39. So I found that Ely has probably the thinnest rims. There's another 39. Let's go through these quickly. 30. Oh, come on. 39. Pretty consistent. 39. And 38, 38. So I found that Lapua tends to be around 42 and a half to 43 thousandths. CCI tends to be around that 41 thousandths to 42 thousandths. And Ely is, Ely rifle ammo is pretty consistently 39 thousandths. I found that Ely pistol ammo tends towards that 38 thousandths, so depending on what you're using. And yes, you can use 22 LR pistol rounds in a rifle. So that gives us a pretty interesting spread between Lapua being the thickest, CCI somewhere in the middle, 10X being the thinnest. So how does that relate to our headspace? Well, we measured our headspace of our CZ rifle, which this video series is focused on, at 43 and a half thousandths. So it's probably closest to the Lapua SK brand of ammunition and furthest away from 
ELE ammunition. So will these perform differently? Obviously there's going to be lots of lot variation and lot testing is key, but I think that gives us a good starting point. And then if we want to try using ELE ammo in the rifle, it might be prudent to do bolt shims to get that headspace a little tighter. In fact, I'll pop a picture up here in, on Ely's website, it actually dictates that you should have headspace between 40 thousandths and 41 thousandths. And if we look at sort of the SAMI spec for a chambering, the minimum is 43 thousandths for headspace. So interesting that Ely prefers a much, much tighter headspace than even SAMI specifications for the chamber allow. But if you look at the SAMI specifications for the actual bullet itself, 43 thousandths is the high end. It can vary as much as seven thousandths on uh, less than that on the low end. So the Ely ammo is still within spec. It's just interesting that that specification doesn't necessarily match what the SAMI specification for chambering the rifle is. So quick hack if you don't want to get one of these, which I think is a pretty handy tool if you're going to go down this rabbit hole of insane measuring and maybe weight sorting, rim thickness sorting bullets that we will get into on this channel. So if you're not crazy like me, Embrace your inner brass goblin when you go to the range and find a fired 223 or 556 round. And what we can do is we can take our calipers and we're going to zero them out on this round, this 223 round. So I'm just going to zero out the calipers there. And now all we do is we take this and we pop it in here. And now we can. We have a datum where we can measure headspace. So that's coming right around 40 when we got 39 before. So it may not be as accurate. There's 39 and a half. But if you're just looking for relative measurements instead of absolute measurements, this is going to get you pretty close. There's another 39 and a half. Let's switch it up back to CCI. Remember these were somewhere between 41 and 42. So 41.5, do one more. You get the idea. Here's our 42. And the Lapu ammo is usually 42 and a half to 43. 42 and a half. Forty three, forty two and a half. I'll do one more. Forty three. So as you can see, this is a pretty also easy way. Get yourself a two two three round, take your twenty two long rifle bullet, put it in there, and you can use that as a measured or measure rim thickness. Again, probably not as accurate as the dedicated rim thickness gauge, but in a pinch for comparison's sake, um, should give you some answers. So two options, two to three case, dedicated rim thickness measuring gauge, get yourself a nice set of dial or digital calibers. And that's all there is to rim thickness. Now the question remains, does any of this matter? We'll find out in future videos, so stay tuned for that. Until I see you next time, as always, score more points. Mm -hmm.